Hello, my name is Gabriel Jimenez, and today I will be presenting a work that uh, performed an intro screening of a flower library against uh, SARS CoV 2 main proteins and how this uh, procedure revealed novel insights into alterate inhibition of this proteolytic enzyme. So uh, we focus our virtual screening towards uh, three sites. First, the substrate binding site, second, the dimerization site, and the third one, an, an originally predicted cryptic alosteric site. After defining our target regions, we assemble a database of flavonoids of roughly 5,000 compounds, which were then fast screened uh, using autodoc Vina uh, with light parameters. And then we retrieve the top 100 best compounds by binding energy and subjected them to a re-scoring using autodoc 4 uh, with more exhaustive parameters. After doing that re-scoring, we select the best top five uh, compounds again by binding energy uh, per site. Uh, to test if this pipeline could recreate experimental observations, we applied it to a cross-docking methodology where, which uh, reconstructed uh, with high fidelity three co-crystallized uh, complex available in protein data bank with RMSDs of two abstracts or uh, less. Then these top five with their corresponding receptors uh, were subjected to molecular dynamic simulations and then the, post, uh, the standard post-analysis were uh, applied. After doing that, we end up with four candidates, two for the substrate site, one for the dimerization site, and one for the cryptic site. Uh, before continuing, it, it is important to recall that the main protein is a dimer, so I will be referring to both of its proteins as A and B um, to ease uh, explanations. Also, it is important for you to know that, it's up the, that the SBS virtual screening uh, was performed against uh, protomer A's SBS. Uh, now I'm going to speak uh, to talk a little bit about uh, SBS candidates or serine E and A11. But first, it is also important for you to know that uh, um, there is evidence that points that the catalytic, uh, that the chemical reaction catalyzed by the main protease could only uh, take place at only uh, one protomer at a time. Uh, molecular dynamic simulations support this and also explain it in the fact that uh, maybe an induced fit mechanism is governing the catalytic uh, mechanism uh, of the main proteins. More specifically, the molecular, uh, 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 one in silico study have observed that an increase in one protomer uh, SBS volume triggers a decrease in the volume of the other SBS. We wanted to test if we, if our molecular dynamics simulations could only could also reproduce that. Instead of volume, we have used a solvent accessible surface area measurement as direct values uh, for the degree of opening or closing of these software sites. And in the uh, in the molecular simulations of the main protein is free of any ligand, which is represented by panel A. We observed indeed that the alternating behavior is maintained through uh, the 600 nanoseconds of, of the dynamics. As you can see here, an increase in protomer A's uh, social mean inside SASA triggers a decrease in the other SBS. Uh, most importantly, we observed that our line of dorsilurin E was capable of disrupting this alternating behavior and even prompting a uh, prompt, uh, synchronization between the opening or closing of both of these SVS, as can be seen uh, here in panel C, in the confluence between uh, the blue and red lines. Uh, this was this disruption in the alternating behavior was also observed for Eutrinon A11, however, in less magnitude. It is also remarkable that not all the lines we have tested uh, disrupted this alternating behavior, as can be seen here in panel D, where, which represents the complex between the main protease our, and our positive control X77. Uh, and as you can see, uh, the disruption mechanism is not disrupted by this uh, X77 inhibitor. Uh, remarkably, there is a correlation between the degree of disruption uh, between, uh, of this alternating behavior and the frequency of interactions of the disrupting ligand with C-terminal residues of protomer B. For, for instance, dorsilurin E, which is the ligand with most disrupted this, this, uh, this alternating uh, mechanism, has uh, the most frequent interactions with 
uh, two C terminal residues of protomer B. On the other hand, X77, which did not trigger any disruption mechanism, did not interact with any uh, C terminal uh, protomer B residue. Be, using this relationship, we propose, we have proposed that uh, maybe C terminal residues are the key for understanding this uh, alternating behavior that governs the catalytic activity of the main proteins. However, more studies need to be conducted to support this asseveration. Um, I will also explain a little bit about Sangenol O, our demerization candidate. Sangenol O being to region A, uh, previously reported uh, allosteric site. Uh, it has been proved that binding to region A uh, triggers enzymatic uh, inactivation. But the structural mechanism behind this uh, inactivation is not well understood. Here, our molecular dynamic simulations show that maybe binding of Sanconol O to region A causes a change in the geometry of the substrate binding site, and that change leads to inhibition. As can be seen here, as can be seen here in panel B, black line represents the uh, substrate binding site residues as uh, RMSDs of a free uh, main protease, while the red line represents the same region but uh, for uh, main proteins in complex with Sanchenol A, where Sanchenol A is binding by region A. So we observe that only in the system with Sanchenol O, we observe an increase in uh, the RMSD of the SBS residues, which actually represents a change in the geometry. To take uh, the things a little bit farther, we have observed that uh, this increase uh, may be correlated with an flexibilization of a region of the main protease, main protease that I'm uh, pointing out here. This region corresponds to uh, the so-called hinge loop. So we propose that maybe by binding to region A, Sanchenol O is, flexib is, uh, is causing a flexibilization of this uh, hinge loop, which is the principle responsible for the movements of the main protease. And that flexibilization is allosterically inducing the substrate binding site to change its geometry. Finally, I would like to end the presentation by explaining our cryptic site candidate. Uh, this um, ligand bound to our also previously reported region that we call region B. And by doing that, it triggered a movement, as you can see here in panel A. The cyan representation of the protein is the initial conformation, while the green structure represents the final conformation after our cryptic ligand uh, bound to region B. And as you can see, there uh, is a, a reorientation of domain three, which I'm pointing here, with respect of domain one and two. This reorientation resembles a, a hinge, so we call it a hinge movement. It is interesting because this hinge movement was also observed in a previous uh, study of a SARS-CoV mutated structure. This uh, mutated structure was uh, resolved by uh, crystallographic experiments and lose any catalytic activity. And therefore, we believe that binding to region B by our cryptic ligand could have a high probability of uh, triggering a uh, main protease inactivation. The mechanism behind this movement is a little bit complex, but we believe that is uh, through an interaction of our ligand to, uh, with an energy terminal residue, uh, specifically arginine 4. This causes a rotation, and then uh, this rotation causes a repulsion between one union groups of arginine 4 and arginine 298. Uh, I think I didn't mention it, but arginine 298 is a key residue because actually the mutated SARS-CoV structure is, is mutated in this position. Actually, it's a mutation of arginine 298 for alanine. And therefore, it, it is a uh, key uh, in this uh, hinge mechanism. Therefore, we believe that this repulsion between one eating groups causes arginine 298 to move upwards, which leaves the free entrance for the one eating uh, group of arginine 4 to the interdomain cleft. This introduction of the one eating group uh, causes a disruption in two hydrogen, hydrogen bonds, which, along with the steric repulsion caused by the insertion of such a bulky group in a, in a small cleft, triggers the hinge movement. 
So this is practically all. Thank you very much for your attention. I would like to say thanks to Ana Paula Vargas Ruiz and Nicolas Delgado, my, fir my first co-authors, co and the rest of the team. Also a special thank uh, for this organizing committee and also for our funding agency from the, from, from the seat from Peru. Thank you very much for your attention.